It's not every day we get a news story about a Roman emperor, but here we are. The North Hertfordshire Museum in uh, North Hertfordshire has decided to reclassify Elagabalus as a trans woman. This is really exciting, right? After all, this is a channel about transgender history, and I did like an hour-long video on Elagabalus, and I used she, her pronouns the whole time, so that must mean Elagabalus was trans, right? And that must mean that she's finally getting the respect and recognition that she deserves, right? Right? <sighs> Look, context is everything. Sometimes there's more nuance to things when you dig a little deeper. Just because the sources say Elagabalus identified as a lady doesn't mean she actually identified as a lady. And not in the like 18th century way where you read two letters between women that are extremely gay and yet historians call them roommates. I am reduced to a thing that wants Virginia. I composed a beautiful letter to you in the sleepless nightmare hours of the night and it has all gone. I just miss you in a quite simple, desperate, human way. It is incredible how essential to me you have become. I suppose you're accustomed to people telling you these things. Damn you, spoiled creature. I shan't make you love me anymore by giving myself away like this. But oh my dear, I can't be clever and standoffish with you. I love you too much for that. No, no, this is a different story. Elagabalus didn't write anything herself, as far as we know, so we have to rely on what other people said about her. In case this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm Sophie, and this is We Have Always Existed. It's a channel where we explore the wealth of transgender histories from the ancient Mediterranean. Like, comment, subscribe, Patreon, yada yada. Anyway, a while back I did a video on Elagabalus. This was the third video on the channel, but it was actually one of the first scripts that I had started writing, back when the whole channel in the first place was just a twinkle in my eye. I finished writing it, but hadn't finished filming and editing it when Mia Mulder put out her video on Elagabalus. And I'm always going to be a little bit salty about that. But anyway, my video was a deep dive into the primary sources and the scholarship around Elagabalus. If you haven't seen that video already, you probably should check that out first before you go too much deeper into this one, because it's going to provide a lot of context to what we're talking about here. Anyway, spoiler alert, my conclusion was that we can't know that she's trans based on the sources we have available, and barring some miraculous discovery of some new source that sheds further light on the subject, we'll probably never know for sure. But that hasn't stopped the woke mob. Breaking news, the woke North Hertfordshire Museum has decided to rewrite history. Will they stop at nothing in their depraved pursuits of forcing their fetishes on everybody else? Now we can't even look to the golden age of human virtue and purity, the Roman Empire, without thinking about pronouns. The ancient world was austere, honorable, temperate, and now it's nothing but gays and sex, and gay sex everywhere. Why is there gay sex no matter where I look? It's all very silly. Reporting on history sometimes feels like reporting on science. Nobody really seems to know how to do it properly. But wow, is this ever embarrassing. And I'm not just talking about the right-wing sources here. Look, Elagabalus may have been trans. We can't know based on the information we have. The responsible historical approach is to leave her thoroughly in the maybe bin. But despite the parade of news articles on the topic of the North Hertfordshire Museum deciding to make Elagabalus a trans woman, there's very little in the way of actual information here. Either it's right-wingers trying to rile up their base, frothing at the mouth to yell about pronouns and wokeness, or it's LGBTQ2IA plus sources desperately trying to find some sort of story about trans people that isn't depressing, or it's people with no background in writing history doing their best to write history and figure things out with what I'm sure is a very tight deadline, or it's clickbait writers writing clickbait articles with clickbait headlines. What all of these pisseurs de copie are missing is context. First, as usual, there's a media frenzy around a topic related to something trans, and as usual, it's a very minor thing blown out of proportion. In this case, the North Hertfordshire Museum has a single Elagabalus coin in a tiny little queer display. That's not really that big a deal. My whole house is a queer display, and I have an Elagabalus coin. See? Check it out. It's right there. It's a little hard to see because the coin is pretty damaged, but you can see that this is Elagabalus's face, 
and though unfortunately most of the wording around the side of it has been worn away, it's been confirmed by an external source that this is an Elagabalus coin. On the obverse, you can see Elagabalus's face, and on the reverse, you can see around the edge it says K-I-A-N. That's part of what would have said Marcianopolis, which is assumingly where this was pressed. Anyway, you can get these all over the place. This coin itself was only about 30 bucks at a local coin shop. I think it's really cool. Anyway, they've included this coin in their LGBT displays that they set up for Pride Month. And honestly, I'm fine with that. Reportedly, Elagabalus married both men and women, so whether she was trans or not, that still, that still fits, right? But if we're going in that direction, that would count for the Emperor Hadrian as well. Do they include Hadrian in their displays? I don't know, to be fair. I reached out a couple times, didn't hear anything back. I would love to have talked to somebody at the museum to answer some of the questions I would have about it. I didn't hear back from them. They do boast a fairly large numismatics collection at their museum, but there's not much information on their website about what's actually in their numismatics collection. But as usual, it seems, it's the politicians causing trouble. The local council is involved with operations of the museum, and Keith Hoskins, councillor and executive member for Enterprise and Arts, told this to The Telegraph, quote, Elagabalus most definitely preferred the she pronoun, and as such this is something we reflect when discussing her in contemporary times. We try to be sensitive to identifying pronouns for people in the past, as we are for people in the present. It is only polite and respectful. We know that Elagabalus identified as a woman, and was explicit about which pronouns to use, which shows that pronouns are not a new thing. <sighs> pronouns are not a new thing, it's true. People using specific pronouns for themselves is also not a new thing. They didn't exactly work that way in Latin, though. This is a massive oversimplification, of course, but in most cases, the ending of a word determines its gender. Dominus for lord, domina for lady, rex for king, regina for queen, etc. Coins for Queen Elizabeth, rest in piss, say regina on them, and coins for this moron say rex, because these fools have been engaged in a millennia-long cosplay of Roman emperors and they just can't seem to let it go. The DG part, by the way, means Dei Gratia, by the grace of God. Not really pronouns, but whatever, close enough. It is polite and respectful to do your best to use the correct pronouns for people. That is also true, and it's especially nice to see a UK politician use that, so I don't want to put you on blast too much. Good on you, Keith. But to say that we know Elagabalus identified as a woman, and that we know she used she, her pronouns? That's simply not true. We have three different sources on Elagabalus. Each is unreliable for its own reasons. Check out the original video that I made for more information on that. So while they do describe her in pretty transy terms, they're also not reliable sources for her life. So why did I use she, her pronouns when referring to Elagabalus in that video? Why am I using them now? because it is no more or less correct than using he, him. There is no conclusive proof that she was trans, but there is also no conclusive proof that she wasn't trans. There are plenty of sources that use he, him, and I wanted to use she, her as a bit of a counterbalance on the off chance that she actually was trans. But don't misinterpret. I'm not leaning toward one conclusion or another here. We don't know. I wasn't claiming her as trans, because the sources did not provide enough information for us to do so, despite the fact that the video thumbnail was the Elagabalus sculpture against a trans flag. I really don't think it's a big deal for people to use she, her pronouns when referring to Elagabalus. Clearly. I also don't think it's that big a deal to use Elagabalus in displays about LGBTQ2IA plus people. But, at the risk of sounding like a creationist here, teach the controversy. We can't be out here telling people that Elagabalus was definitively trans because that evidence doesn't exist. And look, the reality is, if we take at face value the fact that Elagabalus was trans, we also have to take everything else those sources say at face value as well. And based on what those sources say, Elagabalus was a terrible person. Like, just awful. Unbelievably awful. I'm not going to go into the details here, but not a good person. And... Quite frankly, we get enough bad press as it is. Now, the North Hertfordshire Museum is 
not exactly the Met, but it still seems to be a reputable museum run by good people with academic credentials. The museum's curator is a guy named Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews, who's got a handful of publications under his name, mostly related to archaeological digs of ancient sites near North Hertfordshire. He's also got this wonderful Web 1.0 page where he's got some blog articles on there that he wrote back in the day talking about atheism, archaeology, growing up gay in Manchester in the 90s, and this wonderful fawning praise of his partner. These sorts of like personal home pages that people built back in the like 90s, early 2000s are just such wonderful, wonderful pieces of internet history in themselves. The wonderful electronic music pioneer and trans woman, Wendy Carlos, also has one of these awesome Web 1.0 homepages. It's still around too, go check it out. Maybe this is just 90s kid nostalgia, or maybe it's reminding me of the time back before we went to only five different web pages over and over again because billionaires had gentrified the internet. Anyway, the North Hertfordshire Museum seems like it's run by good people, intelligent people, well-meaning people with academic credentials. They seem like they know what they're doing, and without further details on what this thing actually says, None of the articles said so, I couldn't get a hold of them, without more information on what their display actually says, I can't get into the details here. I do think they ought to put a lid on their counselor yakking about this stuff though. I wasn't even going to do a video on this, but people keep sending me stuff about it over and over and over again, so here we are, this is out of the way, these are my feelings on the topic. Are we good now? Can I move on to the other video that I was working on? Cool. Thanks y'all.